Irene's rescue crews deal with the immediate impact of Irene. There are new questions in Washington about whether FEMA has enough money to deal with this disaster. We're going to talk about that with the agency's administrator in just a moment. But first, NBC's Tom Costello is in Washington with more. Tom, good morning to you. Hi, Matt. This comes, of course, just as hurricane season actually heats up. Simply put, FEMA is running out of money. The shortfall could climb to $5 billion. So it's putting a temporary halt to paying for rebuilding projects in other disaster zones, from Joplin to Tuscaloosa, even Katrina. With Irene's path of destruction stretching from North Carolina to Vermont, President Obama offered a promise on Tuesday. As a government, we're going to make sure that states and communities have the support they need so their folks can recover. But in a year of mounting natural disasters from snowstorms and historic floods to catastrophic tornadoes, FEMA's budget is stretched thin. Now less than $800 million in the disaster relief fund and everyone is lining up for help. Like any town uh, and any county, uh, our coffers are a little bit bare at the moment. Uh, we didn't really budget for a major cleanup like this. So to pay for the food, water and ongoing emergency operations associated with Irene, FEMA is freezing new requests from state and local governments rebuilding from past disasters. That means if there were a new request for a school in tornado ravaged Joplin, a bridge in Tuscaloosa, or a project in Katrina's wake, all would be on hold for now. For any projects that have not come in for approval, we're not going to be able to fund those at this point. We're going to postpone those. Postpone, not cancel. You can blame politics and the new budget realities. The Republican-controlled House already voted to give FEMA another $1 billion this fiscal year, but that increase is tied to budget cuts elsewhere. So Senate Democrats haven't acted. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor on Fox News. Yes, there's a federal role. Yes, we're going to find the money. Uh, we're just going to need to make sure uh, that there are savings elsewhere to continue to do so. In one week, Cantor's own state of Virginia was hit by both an earthquake and a hurricane. There was widespread damage from uh, Vermont to uh, South Carolina. Uh, this is going to be a big price tag. While no one is suggesting FEMA doesn't need the money to respond to this year's mounting disasters, it may come at the expense of other government programs. Whoa, look at that. The Senate is expected to take up FEMA's funding when it returns next week. For Republicans, this is a matter of paying for the emergency, but cutting back elsewhere. But Matt, 33 times in the past, Congress has approved money for disaster relief without cutting from other areas of the budget. Back to you. All right, Tom Costello. Tom, thank you very much. Craig Fugate is the administrator of FEMA. Administrator Fugate, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. You don't have to be a math whiz to realize that the numbers don't add up here. You've got about $800 million in the disaster fund right now. Bills from Irene are already coming in at estimates of some $7 billion. So if I have been flooded out of my home in New Jersey or I've lost a business in Vermont, can I count on FEMA? For the individual assistance, yes, we have not, uh, not stopped doing that. What we have done is just doing the permanent work, uh, repair work. We're doing the emergency work, the life-saving activities, and uh, all of those activities are still ongoing. You still, you need Congress to act and get more money into your coffers. But as we've seen lately, although Tom Costello says 33 times in the past, Congress has increased funding for FEMA without cuts, we know that these are different times and Congress doesn't act quickly on anything dealing with spending right now. Are you worried about that? I'm worried about the people that we're working to help right now begin the immediate recovery. We got a job here to do at FEMA. We're going to stay focused on it. We're working with the White House on the funds we're going to need. But we're focused right now on this initial response and being prepared for the next disaster. Yeah, but I understand that. And, and it is the people who need the help that you should be paying attention to. But what is your message to Congress that's going to take this up when they come back from their vacation? In this country, Americans have always come to the aid of other Americans in a crisis and disaster. That's our job. That's what we do. That's who we are. FEMA's doing its job. We're going to keep working and supporting the governors and the citizens that have survived this disaster. So we're doing our job. In the past, FEMA has run short of funds before. As we mentioned, that Congress has, has generally come through. Does the system itself need to be changed or fixed, Administrator Fugate, so that this doesn't happen in the future? 
Well, in this country, again, we look at these large-scale disasters as something that's hard to budget for. This is a question that's best left to the appropriators and to those that deal with these issues. FEMA's doing its job. We're working. But again, Americans have always come to other Americans, whether it's Katrina, the hurricanes I went through in Florida, the earthquakes on the West Coast. All disasters, when they get to this point, we've always as a country have come to each other's aid. You've been through Vermont. You've taken a look at the damage there. You've been through upstate New York and seen what happened there as a result of Irene. I know you're going to be spending some time in New Jersey today. What's your overall assessment? That this was not a coastal impact. This was a flood event and a power outage. And the flood damages here are very dramatic. And uh, again, we're working hard with our state partners as they focus on life safety as we get ready to support the recovery. FEMA Administrator Craig Fugate. Mr. Fugate, thank you very much for your time. Do you have any food reserves in your home right now? How long could you provide food for your family if the food supply was cut off? A month? A week? Three days? Wouldn't you feel better if you had the necessary reserves? Have you ever noticed that the more advanced we get, the less prepared we are? Many things that defined life only a hundred years ago are so convenient today that we don't really think about what would happen if that convenience were gone. Consider how we get our food. We just go down to the grocery store and grab a few things. But what if something happened that interrupted the food supply to the store? How long would it take for the shelves to be wiped out? What would you do? How long could you and your family survive? You know, for all the other important things in our lives, we have a variety of professionals, from mechanics to doctors, to help cover our bases. Why don't we also have a food professional? Food is our greatest dependency. Yet most of us find ourselves unprepared for the uncertainties that lie ahead. Why take chances? Why not do something about it? You've already taken the first step. Keep moving forward with this tour and we can help you put a plan together and even show you how to get your food for free.